<laughs> oh, hello. You caught me off guard. I didn't see you there. You'll have to forgive me. I was just uh, catching up on a little uh, pleasure reading. But now that you're here, I'll just put this book down right over here and scene. Now, what you just witnessed was an example of really good acting. I mean, I don't even wear glasses. Um, and now that we can both agree that I'm a fairly gifted actor, I'd like to talk a little bit about my job as an acting teacher. I see my job as an acting teacher as having two parts. Number one, uh, I have to teach the students to do the work of an actor. And number two, I have to teach them how to live the life of an actor. Um, there's an old precept, maxim, saying, whatever you want to call it. Um, acting is reacting. Now, this is usually attributed to Konstantin Stanislavski, the famous Russian uh, actor, director. Um, sometimes it's attributed to Marlon Brando. doesn't matter who said it. Um, now, I find acting is reacting a little problematic as an acting teacher, and I'll tell you why. Because, uh, really, when you think about it, there are two types of reactions, voluntary and involuntary. And all too often what I t see time and time again from young actors is an attempt to recreate the involuntary emotional reactions we tend to experience in the heat of real life conflict. We've all seen it, right? This soap opera kind of acting where someone in a scene says or does something kind of heinous and the other character uh, sweeps away, right? Or, or, or flitters away only to return immediately in, in some attempt to uh, uh, indicate emotional distress. Now, on a practical level, when you move away from something on stage, uh, the movement becomes arbitrary and unspecific. Um, why? Because if I'm moving away from these glasses, for instance, I could go this way, I could go that way, I could go that way, I could go there, I could go there, I could go there, I could go there. The options are uh, limitless, right? Um, but if I'm moving towards something specific, then the move becomes clear and motivated. And it's in this kind of specificity in the choices we make as actors uh, that helps the audience to not only register, but understand the moment-by-moment -moment developments of the story. Now, on a deeper level, the problem with this type of uh, reaction is that on stage, nothing should be arbitrary. Um, every piece of drama is, in essence, a power struggle. And as soon as you allow your characters to react to something, what you're doing is you're giving the power to the other person. They're the ones now determining the forward movement of the scene. Um, in essence, you're giving up control. Now, as actors, we want to act, not react. Granted, we want our actions to be informed by whatever it was we just received from our scene partner. Um, after all, how can you choose your weapon until you know what it is you're fighting against? Uh, but the point is, we want to make every choice, big or small, motivated by the direct and active pursuit of a specific on-stage objective. Um, in essence, we always want to take responsibilities for our actions. Another way of saying this is uh, something that was taught to me by my acting teacher here at Kenyon, Tom Turgeon. Never move away from something, always move towards something. And now when you think about it, uh, this is not only a useful precept on the stage, but it's also a pretty good way to live your life. Boom. Dealt with.